Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be doing a follow-up to the recent uh, look at British Gore paperbacks by John Norman with a look at the full range of the American paperbacks as well as some of the very early French ones as well that are in my collection. So that is going to be today's video and at the very end I'm going to have a look at some of the feedback I got on that first uh, video, what people's thoughts are on the series uh, in 2019. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. So here we have the first of my American uh, John Norman Gore books. Now these uh, were published um, initially by Ballantine Books in America, a BB there, and this is the very first one in the series. Um, it is actually quite tough to find this in a high grade first edition. Um, so you see mine's pretty old yellowed here and uh, um, it is in a bit of a sorry old state, but not December 1966. So, uh, we are looking at quite some time ago now since this was published. Um, and there we are, that is the, the very first one. And, you know, a Ballantine fantasy adventure. That's exactly how it was uh, marketed. Um, then we've got book two, which is Outlaw of Gore. Once again, the Ballantine edition. Number three, which is Priest Kings of Gore. Now, alas, I do not know all the cover artists, so there's a few I recognize, but there's so many that I don't. So I'm not even going to try and uh, um, uh, pronounce them. They're in 1968, December 68 for this, this first edition. Um, yeah, I'm not going to try uh, to guess who they are, um, but I'm sure, as has happened in the past, um, knowledgeable viewers uh, of this series will be able to help out. Uh, we've got book four, which is uh, Nomads of Gore. It's that one there. And these very much do have a charm of the late 60s, and, I, and I, I really do love these early ones. I think they're excellent. First three there on the back. Uh, book five, we have Assassin of Gore. So a slight change now in the uh, cover design. The, the, the red is gone. Uh, the red outline and it's a full jacket now. This is 1970. Ah, there we are. So cover art by Gino Di Chile. Di, Di Achille. Gino Di Achille. How is that how you pronounce it? Anyway, that's the chap who did uh, book five. At number six, we have Raiders of Gore. Similar to the British first edition jacket. Same cover artist, December 71 there. So let's pop these uh, spine on so we can have a little look as we go through the series because once again, they do take up rather a lot of space. Uh, book number seven is Captive of Gore. So we'll have a look at the comments later on the first video, but um, this is where people started to wane, to be honest. Um, uh, same cover illustrator again. Uh, people said they started going off the series and it sort of lost its fantasy elements and uh, was more into the sort of female subjugation, but um, many people do still love this. Now this was the very first one in door books with their familiar um, yellow spine. So, um, Ballantine, yeah, rightly or wrongly, dropped the, the rights to uh, publish John Norman. Maybe Norman just got a better deal from um, uh, Daw, but um, from number eight onwards, they were the publishers right until the very last uh, of the original run in um, uh, for Magicians of Gore in the 80s. So there we are, March 1974. Same cover, cover, cover illustrator came over. And this one has got interior illustrations as well. So, admittedly, nothing to shout home about. But there's book eight. And the first of the door ones. Book nine, we've got Marauders of Gore. Ah, 
I do like the door books. Um, yeah, that publisher, Donald A. Walham, he was an author as well. And uh, uh, he, uh, I think they make themselves a really nice little collection. I've got the first dozen or so of the numbered series and I've got various other books uh, in door. Um, yeah, they I mean, I really like them. The, the early ones, they make a great library. Uh, March, 1975 for that one, for book nine. And then number 10 is Tribesman of Gore. Yeah, really nice, uh, nice artwork on that one. The 10th book, all brand new, of course. March 1976, same cover illustrator, um, advertising his somewhat controversial imaginative sex. <laughs> Not part of the Gore series, I hasten to add, um, but more in line with what Norman fans of a certain type were into. Then we've got number 11, which is um, Slave Girl of Gore. So this is the 11th book in the series. And uh, once again, new for 1977. So they were into a formula by now where they were publishing a brand new one uh, each year by uh, John Norman. So this is 1977. The books are starting to get a bit beefier now. You see that's a much, much thicker, thicker Gore book. And then we've got number 12, which is The Beasts of Gore. And the door books themselves have all been numbered a bit like the old Penguin books. Um, so uh, that makes these, you know, even non-Gore fans will always want a copy of these simply because if they're trying to get a library of door books together, these come as part and parcel of it and they're definitely part of the door story. Um, March 1978 for Beasts of Gore. Number 13, we've got Explorers of Gore. I can't believe, I just didn't know that this artist here, however you pronounce his name, did all these early ones, uh, the same artist. I actually did not know that. Um, incredible. So we've got Fighting Slave of Gore, so we're book 14 now. So we are over halfway on the uh, American editions that I've got, although I've got a few of the, uh, the spin-offs as well. 1980. Ah, different cover artists. So we've got Richard Hescox. Hes Richard Hescox, very, very similar style, isn't it? For the 14th book. Number 15, we've got Rogue of Gore. Or original. Richard Hescox again doing the cover art. Then we've got Guardsman of Gore, so book 16 in the series. Ken Kelly, yeah. He does um he did a lot of this fantasy work, record covers and book jackets. November 1981. Look at that. What a fantastic jacket that is, isn't it? Ken Kelly. That was Guardsman. Then we got number 17, which is Savages of Gore. Another fantastic cover art there. I wonder if these ever got released as prints and things like that. You can imagine they probably did. Ken Kelly again, yeah, 1982. The 1982 Gore book. Now I'm gonna to have to make a little bit more room again. These are taking up so much space. Let's pop that over to the back. And we've got um, Blood Brothers of Gore, which is number 18. Now on these American ones, I was surprised that I didn't actually finish the set. I've got still got plenty more to show you, but I didn't quite get them all. But this is number 18. Ken Kelly again from 1982. Real big thick one that, the first of the real epic, epic books, the Blood Brothers. Now uh, number 19, Kajara or Kajara of Gore, I don't know. So that one I'm going to just pop a photo in so we can, for the sake of completeness, we're going to be able to have a look at all the, the American editions in, uh, in their first jackets. Um, I have, however, and that was number 19. Number 20 I have got, which is the Players of Gore. 
Uh, once again, a fantastic jacket, and I believe that is another Ken Kelly. So let's have a have a little look here. Yeah, Ken Kelly, 1984. That is fantastic, that isn't it? What a great, great jacket that one is. That's for the 20th book, a bit thinner that one. The next one I've got is uh, number 21, which is Mercenaries of Gore. And these tail end ones for a long, long time were quite difficult to get hold of. And obviously even more so in Britain because we had our British edition. So that's probably why I've not ended up filling in the gaps on a couple of these uh, odd ones that I'm still missing. But I'm sure they'll come to me in time that these things do. Patience is a virtue if you're a collector. Oh, we didn't check the cover artist on that. It was at Ken Kelly again. It was, yeah. I had a funny feeling that Boris did some covers um, on these, but I might be wrong. Um, but all these later ones have been uh, Ken Kelly, haven't they? Now, the next one I've got is Renegades of Gore, which is number 23. Obviously, by this point, in fact, on the last book, Dord dropped their distinctive yellow spines, which I thought was a shame because they made them stand out on the shelf. But this is number 23. Um, that looks like Ken Kelly's signature again. Another fantastic... Um, uh, front jacket, that one, for number 23. Yeah, and it's got the door number there, 664. For the collectors, it's on the front there. That's a chap I follow on Instagram. I think he's got all the first 2,000 door books. Absolutely fantastic. Um, so that was Renegades. Now, number 24, Vagabonds, I do not have. So that's another one I'll pop the picture in. But I do have the last of the original run which was number 25, which is uh, Magicians of Gore. And this for a long, long time was very, very tough to get hold of. Um, I can see it's got a Ken Kelly signature there. Um, as you can see, real big thick book, but this is pretty much mint. Um, uh, I hear good things about this one. In actual fact, I mean, sort of the series gets wrapped up. Um, I guess he, he thought that would be the end of it. Um, 1988. Although, of course, as we all know, um, Norman has come back to write in the books again. And um, I think the very latest one, number 35, so 10 more after this now, has been published as an ebook, and that's a quarry, of course. So uh, if you are keen and you want to see the story carry on, um, there is room for you to go. Now that's it for the original um, US Gore run. I have got a couple of others. So this was um, similar to the UK series. We've got Time Slave. Um, in fact, they used that same image on the British edition, didn't they? They pinched it. So, yeah, by uh, Gino D'Achilli again. Time Slave. And I've got one more, which is actually a non-Gore book by John Norman. It was the Tolarian Histories. And it's this one, The Chieftain. I only ever got around to getting the first book of this. Um, and it was a bit of a, a break from the, uh, the Gore series. I think there was three in all. Um, I do not know how good these are so i look forward to hearing in the comments if um if they're any good and it's quite interesting here these are published by warner blazing action by the author of the provocative gore saga well some might call it provocative some might call it controversial um we'll have a look at the comments in a minute because uh, uh after that last video there was some absolutely fantastic commentary which uh, i look forward to going through with you so that's it on all my american ones anyway and i've got some French ones to show you now, which I absolutely love. Um, I used to have, um, when I was really into the collecting the gore books, I did have a, a load of hardback gores, if you can believe it. Um, and some of the very best ones uh, were French ones because they came out as like limited editions. Um, but I've no longer got my, uh, my hardback collection. It's just, you know, you have to draw the line somewhere. Um, but I did keep the French paperbacks, which I am delighted that I did keep hold of these because they're so unusual. So... Here's, a, here's the first one then. So Galaxy Bis. Now, um, these are all in the same sort of series published by Opta. This is the first one, which is uh, uh, Tarnsman of Gore. And completely, completely different jackets on these. Um, some of them give a date on, some of them don't. This particular one... Yeah, so copyright John Lang, 1967. This edition, the Opta edition, is 1982 for Tarn's Man of Gore. And it is, you know, there's nothing strange about it except it's just that nice, nice jacket. And it's actually, uh, actual fact, is that, yeah. Oh no, it's just a mirror image of it. So it mirror images on itself, but 
pretty nice that one and we've got this one now i will have to check thankfully they give the british edition name in, inside so this is book two yeah outlaw of gore certainly unusual aren't they then we've got this one priest kings of gore i think i can make an educated guess that this is priest kings and you'll have a look you'll see that on the spines these are also numbered so the opta series number so 85 89 95 and so on so i shall put these spine on as we do these then we've got nomads of gore certainly unusual aren't they now i'm assuming this is assassin of gore les assassins de gore I think it's a pretty good guess. So Raiders of Gore is Les Pirates de Gore. And much more risque covers than perhaps you get in uh, the UK or um, America. And the final one I've got of these uh, French ones is this one, which is uh, Les Enquets de Gore. So this is a uh, captive of Gore and uh, very much uh, controversial and I guess appealing to a particular market. But that is uh, the seventh volume. So it's the first seven, I believe, in the, uh, in the French series. So what I'm going to do now, that's it for the books. I'm going to pause there and um, I'm going to call up my computer and we're going to have a little look and discuss some of the um, comments that I had on that original video. So I'm just gonna pause it there slightly. Okay, so I thought it might be a bit of fun uh, since that first video was a little bit controversial, just to go through some of the feedback that I've had on it. Um, now I've pulled up the comments that came in on the YouTube video, uh, but I had far, far more uh, come in on the actual Facebook post on Men's Adventure paperbacks, which is a fantastic uh, Facebook group. So let's have a little look through the um, the YouTube ones first. So this, this one from Ted Curtis. So after the first five, it steadily went off the rails with all the slave girl emphasis. The tour, late numbered in the 20s, have some value due to their scarcity. Well, that's absolutely correct. Uh, Mondasian, what did he say? Uh, interesting video. Thanks. I might give the first one a try. I like the Blade books by Jeffrey Lord and these look similar. Well, that's that's a point. Um, Leonard Mayer. Thanks, Jules. Your videos are always a delight to watch. Well, thank you, Leonard. Um, I must confess that I'd never heard of this series. Well, there you go. So uh, something a bit different. Uh, Brian Belshaw. My father read these religiously and I often wonder what they were like. Well, there you go. Maybe you want to try the first one, Brian. Um, and Johnny Malone. Great covers. Well, fair dues. They are great covers. Now, pretty standard feedback on Facebook. Nothing too controversial. However, I then went on to, uh, that was on YouTube, right? I went on to the Facebook group and uh, men's adventure paperbacks which is a uh, a fantastic group and i generally post if my video fits um i generally post my videos uh, on there just as a little link because there's thousands of uh, of users of this and it is a really great um facebook group one of many and uh, i do suggest you track them out so i put the pop the video link there and then i ended up getting about 50 comments um so i just do the highlights so bruce grossman the, that book series stopped me reading for close for, to a year. <laughs> that's, that's pretty serious, isn't it? Let's be honest. So Jonathan Borstein, he says, some of the cover art on the early US editions were good. Well, we've just seen those and they absolutely are excellent. Um, Larry Isham, attempting a reread of the first six. I doubt I'll try to get further. Well, um, yeah, so and there is a little follow up. So I said, yeah, that seems to be the opinion. Um, and it says, I've heard suggestions I should skip all those narrated by someone other than Kabot, Tal Kabot, especially the female narrated ones. The last 10 or so doors are really doorsteps. I suspect some plot sneaks in here and there. So, yeah, pretty much uh, that's that's the case. Al McDiarmid, I recently picked up a couple of these and found them unreadable. Well, there you go. Chris Gordon, I've said it before and I'll say it again. The first three or four are quite good, then it just descends into a mis 
mis misogynistic male domination fetish series suitable only for those with similar sexual persuasions. Uh, there are bits there in the early books, but it declined swiftly. Read the first three or four, and once it starts in earnest, you'll soon give up on the rest. Well, potentially that is the case. That does seem to be the, the, the opinion. Although I think it's the first seven or so, and then people start to wane. Um, oddly enough, Lin this is Linda Degos. Oddly enough, I liked the Gore books. There was a Edgar Rice Burroughs flavour to them, and that made them fun to read. And I agree with that um, quite quite a bit. Now, um, Dave Cawley, they are pretty trashy and even a bit re reprehensible. However, Priest Kings of Gore is actually one of the most fun times I've ever had with a book. It's brilliantly daft, schlock, high camp and barking mad, like a perfect Doug McClure movie. Well, there you go. I love it. The previous books were OK, I guess. And the, the ones after Priest Kings, Huntsman's, question mark, I never finished. Priest Kings of Gore is like a bright, shining jewel of entertainment sat amongst some OK books. I may well read past that book in the future. Maybe another one will be as entertaining as my beloved Priest Kings of Gore. Well, I remember Priest Kings and it is actually a really good one that. Um, so, yeah, it comes recommended. David Griffiths, I may try the first one. I've liked the Blade series and this sounds familiar. Leonard Pellman. I thoroughly enjoyed the underlying premise, as well as the plotting of the first eight or, t eight or ten books in the series. I started reading them in the late 60s, not long after their first publication, and for at least a decade I bought each new book as soon as it showed up in my local B. Dalton or Walden books. I probably still have the first 15 or so in a box somewhere. But by 1980, I was growing tired of the repeti repetitive, almost formulaic nature of the books and what seemed to me the author's increasing and somewhat juvenile preoccupation with kinky sex. The last one I remember reading was Fighting Slave of Gore, but I may have read one or two more before losing interest altogether. That's a brilliant comment that was. Um, Ed Mayo, sadistic, pubescent masturbation fantasy. Well, I don't know. John Peel, noted Noted author John Peel, uh, author himself. Um, I met John Norman and his wife a few times and was on panels with him. He would bring pages of notes and try and read them, uh, try and read the lot of them out, whether they were opposite or not. Well, there you go. That's uh, John Peel's take on it. Um, Lee Mason, the first few were fun. After that, though, Craig Smith, utter crap. I gave up after Nomads of Gore. The only reason I got this that far is that I was stupid and 14. Uh, the cover of the first book, though, is especially good. And uh, the round tower in the background always reminded me of the Washington Plaza Hotel in Seattle. So he has actually put a picture of that because it's a bit different to my one. And there we are. Does that look like the round tower in Seattle? I suppose it does a bit. There we are. Ty Smith. The first three were pretty good. Then the pervert fetish thing kicked into high gear. I rarely bail on books, but remember being a hundred pages in and couldn't handle one more page of the endless women dominated in cage crap and chucking it in the trash. Too bad as the tarn ring stuff and action was initially good. The author must have had some serious mental issues. Well, I don't know, um, but there you go. Ty Smith, Craig Smith. I think that was how old I was too. Um, this chap here, Bruce Grossman, um, he did a little blog on it. Now, I can't do the link, but his blog is called Bullets, Broads, Blackmail and Bombs. The book series that broke me. And he talks all about the gore books in there. So you can head on over to bookgasm.com reviews. Uh, Michael Barnett. I thought the first couple were OK. Then they went to crap, as always mentioned, when Norman decided the sexual fetish of abused women was the way to go. It went too far over the top, glorifying what was nothing more than rape. Well, there you go. Martin Edwards. The first five books are the good ones. Tarnsman, Outlaw, Priest, Kings, Nomads and Assassin. Then Raiders came out and the descent into madness began. Tarl Cabot got temporarily enslaved and suffered a complete nervous breakdown by being forced for a short time to endure the life of most Gorian women. By the ninth book, any hopes of a rational series are gone. Uh, strange to think the books were so popular that it, it was the 1974 World Science Fiction Convention's masquerade competition. Several women competed as Kajara of Gore, walking on stage without a stitch of clothing. This led to a new rule the next year, no, no costume is no costume. Uh, below a creation of mine. So what's this? Um, there we are. Shishka of Gore. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so just a couple more to go through, but what fascinating comments these are. So J.D. Charles, 
What the critics fail to mention is the Gore books still sold well when um, when Norman went head over heels into bondage and submission and a female author, Sharon Green, had similar success when she ripped him off with her warrior series about a diplomat on a planet full of Ken Kelly barbarians into bondage and submission. Well, there you go. See, there you go. Getting a recommendation there. Martin Edwards, historical note. The author's full name is John Norman Lang. The first couple of books originally bore the notice copyright John Lang. John Lang, John Lang was a pseudonym used by Michael Crichton on the thrillers he wrote to pay his med school bills. This led to a rumour that persisted through the 1970s that Michael Crichton wrote the Gore books. Well, I guess we know he didn't do that. Uh, Chuck Dixon enjoyed the series back in the day until the perverse stuff took over the books. Martin Edwards. Joel Rosenberg's Guardians of the Flame series can be seen as a rebuttal to the Gore books. A group of college-age gamers become the characters in a very real fantasy world. Uh, one aspect of it is the deeply entrenched slave economy. The protagonists react with, the, with a bleep that and go all Spartacus John Brown but without, having, without the dying at the end part. Craig Smith, nobody has brought this Norman book up yet. I'd be scared to be around anyone who would want to act out one of his sexual fantasies. I'd also want to stay away from any visits inside Norman's brain. Um, yes, so this was indeed published by uh, Dennis Allen, uh, sorry, uh, Dennis A. Wilhelm as a door book, and it is Imaginative Sex, which came out in both Britain and uh, America. I don't have a copy. Uh, Chuck Dixon, I made it as far as the harem of virgins kept captive from birth who had never seen a man in their lives, even for a horny teenager that was going too far. Um, almost there, Joshua Van Dyst. It's a shame that the cover artists went uncredited on so many of those books. Some of them are great. Well, I think we've managed to find uh, most of the cover artists. Um, and then the very last comment uh, so far, three days ago, was I enjoyed the first few. They were like Edgar Rice Burroughs books, but about book four, they took a dark turn. I want to say I made it through book seven, but then I couldn't take it any longer. Uh, brilliant. That was from Al Dutin. So thank you for all those fantastic comments. I'm glad uh, the internet did not explode and my video get taken down by YouTubers being too controversial. I think we are at the end of the day, only looking at these on a historical point of view. And, uh, you know, let's be honest, some of the, uh, the, uh, the scenes and scenarios are actually quite laughable today, but um, good fun all the same. So there you go. That concludes our look at the John Norman uh, Gore books. I hope you've enjoyed this sort of two part video. And uh, if you do fancy it, the books are very, very easy to get these days on eBay. So uh, you shouldn't have to spend a lot to uh, put a little collection of these early books together. So thank you once again for watching. Do please give the video a like and consider subscribing if you have liked the video. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.